Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about um, a project where we have a paper coming out this month, uh, which is um, in continuation of our um, work on the U.S. National Herbarium digital specimen, specimens, how we can make sure that uh, the data that we are using to train our deep learning models, uh, we're able to extend these across different herbaria. So this is a project that um, attempts to do that. It's a collaboration uh, with um, some colleagues at, at Brigham Young University. So this is just a little infographic about our data science lab at the Smithsonian. Um, we do a combination of biodiversity genomics and machine learning projects using Smithsonian collections data, uh, as well as uh, training in data science skills. So the U.S. National Herbarium is uh, housed at the National Museum of Natural History on the Mall. There are about 5 million pressed plant specimens in the herbarium. And, you know, over the decades, there's been digitization that's gone on, but in smaller scale, until a few years ago when the Smithsonian Digitization Program Office uh, made this big push to do mass digitization of the, of the herbarium. And so now there's a conveyor belt installed into the museum and it runs eight hours a day. Well, not right now, um, but generally it runs eight hours a day digitizing thousands of specimens per day. Uh, and there are about 3 million that are publicly available uh, CC0 license, so anyone can get them. You can get the data on GBIF, the images from iDigBio, as well as now from the uh, Smithsonian Open Access uh, data set as well. So we, uh, a number of years ago, I'd say about three years ago, we started thinking about um, some things we could do with these digital data. And one of the first things we tried was whether we could tell apart um, similar, morphologically similar or similar to our eye uh, families of, of plants. And these are two different families of fern allies. They look quite similar to non-fern specialists like myself. And so we trained a deep learning model to discriminate uh, between these, as well as the second part of the project was, could we find the mercury that's on some of these sheets? So until around the early, mostly in the 1800s, but it did extend into the early 1900s, uh, mercury was used to um, paint sheets or they were dipped in order to keep pests away from the collection which does a great job of also, you know, hurting people. So it, this is generally not part of the metadata on each specimen. So it's something that we can see. So you see the specimen on the right has this kind of silvery tint that uh, mercuric chloride precipitates out or, over the decades. And so we can see this with our eye, but it's not part of the metadata. And one thing that was interesting for the collection staff was to know, you know, how much of the collection has this problem. And so we also trained a deep learning model to find uh, specimens that were stained with mercury. It's not moving to the next slide. Okay. Did I skip a slide? That's strange. Sorry about that. Uh, um, so this is the first paper that uh, came out uh, from this work. Um, it was very accurate for both scenarios, both telling apart families and also finding the mercury. So um, since that time, we have been working to really look across the collection and, and start building models that can discriminate species as well as summarize aspects of, of leaf shape uh, for the entire collection. But one thing that came about during this project was the fact that, you know, you look at this sheet and it's not only a plant, right? You have a color bar, you have a label, you could have a stamp, you could have a barcode. So lots of potential sources of bias for training deep learning models. And the Smithsonian data might look one way, but you might be looking at different herbaria as well. And they, they might have, you know, completely different setup. The sheets are generally standard, but um, the size, but what's on those sheets might not be. And yeah, so even, even these, which are two different Smithsonian examples, have, have kind of a different setup. Um, so this is the workflow we came up with for this project, which, so we take our original Smithsonian images, we run a segmentation code, which is built in a combination of plant CV and open CV. And then we manually edit those, um, 
uh, initial processed uh, images to remove um, any aspect that's not plant. So what we're trying to do here is make sure that we know which pixels are plant and which pixels aren't and throw away uh, all of those that are not plant for when we train our, our downstream models. We end up with a, our final ground truth masks, which are high resolution, uh, same resolution as the original images, and they are uh, labeled with, uh, you know, plant pixel as one color and, and everything else is, is black in this case. And then we use those as we use those as training data for a UNet, which will then be able to uh, process millions of our samples to produce uh, training data that only includes plant material. So here's just an example. Here are the original images. Um, this is the result after running the initial segmentation code, and then the result after manual processing. Uh, we produce these processed images, which we call masks, which are called masks in the segmentation literature. So they're images of identical resolution, and they, they define the identity of each pixel. This is used very commonly in medical uh, imaging, where you want to define certain kinds of cells as well. So um, you could also have not just two classes here, where we're talking about plant and not plant, but multiple classes. And we built 400 of these ground truth masks, which um, we were then used to train a UNET. Uh, UNETs were originally, um, the original authors were, were looking at medical applications. So here's an example of the original image again, the ground truth, and then the UNET prediction. And these are squared only because that is, becomes the input for our training for our other deep learning models. So we've used this method to mask uh, around 800,000 firm images from not just from the Smithsonian, but from uh, herbaria all over the world. So every fern image we could find uh, on GBIF has been masked this way. Um, and there, those images are being used to train uh, a model to summarize aspects of fern shape uh, for um, looking at global patterns of biodiversity in ferns. Uh, currently, this paper is in press at Applications in Plant Sciences as part of a, a a special issue on machine learning and plant biology. Um, but I thought it would be out by now. It um, should be out any day now, and I'll, I'll send it along to the list when it is. Um, but the code and the data are all available. The code's on GitHub, and the, the data are on Figshare. So um, please um, use it and, and tell us what you think. And there are lots of people to thank uh, at the Natural History Museum and uh, part of the Data Science Lab. and. Um, this work was partly funded by a Smithsonian Scholarly Studies grant. Thanks. Thank you, Rebecca. Are there any uh, questions for Rebecca before we get Peter Leonard teed up? Uh, hi, Tom. I have one question. Um, can Rebecca tell us the, a little bit the longevity of that project? How, how, what was the timeline? How much time was required? to reach at the point of publication now? So this was actually pretty quick. Um, so we have been um, thinking about doing this for a while. And then this um, the special issue was announced and we thought, oh, could we, could we have something submitted in time for that? So um, my colleague at uh, BYU, he had some undergraduate math students who were really interested in um, trying to, to help us. And so in a, I, I'd say in a matter of weeks, uh, we were able to get the 400 uh, masks that were kind of hand curated. And then the unit itself, the training was, was very fast. I would say, you know, within a week, we were happy with our unit uh, model. Um, we're interested in applying this to other kinds of collections data. And we've started with some uh, fish as well, kind of using the same code. Um, that seems like it will need more work because of the transparency of the fins. Um, so, you know, we're not sure. Um, we'd also, we'd like to test this on other groups of plants. So we focused on ferns because that was our initial application. But, um, so it is kind of um, pretty narrow in that sense, but we think with some tweaks, it could be used for a lot of different applications. Awesome, thanks so much, great work. Thanks. I wonder if each of you could comment on um, training your own model versus using existing models. Rebecca, I, I think you uh, you didn't specify, but I'm wondering how many images you actually went through to get the to get the masking. 
In our case, so we generated 400 uh, masks for training, um, but we did use a pre-trained uh, ResNet 34 unit uh, as implemented in Fast AI and trained our model on top of that. So it was kind of a transfer learning um, example. To what degree are there um, image models or techniques that the three of you think we might be sharing as a community with each other, uh, assuming that there are any that are LAM specific? The important thing going forward is really getting collaboration on building these kind of training sets. So building these high quality hand curate, they ha will have to be hand curated to some degree, but um, I think the, the models themselves are, are not hard to build once you have high quality training data and the more that can be spread across diverse institutions and, and data sets, I think the better the models will be. So finding a way to do that, um, I think will be the important next step. It's really interesting as we, as we think about describing our projects to each other, I can almost see like a, a methodology section as you'd find in an article um, that just describes the the data sets, the test data, and the models that people used, as well as maybe several other things like the computing infrastructure, mm -hmm. um, just in some normalized fashion so people might be able to get more insight into how people achieve these great demos. Mm -hmm.